Hello once again, Rich Gray alongside Bob Kemp here at University of Phoenix Stadium after the Cardinals 27-13. Uh, most complete game is the theme of the uh, press or in the post game from the locker room. They beat the Falcons, improved 4-4, four four, headed into the bye week. Uh, we'll start with the offense. Got off to a little shaky start with the three and out, the interception from Palmer. Had a little a lot of people worried, but they were able to turn around for the second quarter on. Definitely. The second quarter, I would cheat you here, folks. <laughs> the second quarter, they had the ball for only four minutes and seven seconds, but they scored 21 points. Granted, they scored a touchdown in the first play of the second quarter, but still. 21 points. They only had 11 plays. They got 154 yards in those 11 plays. Seven first downs on those 11 plays. And this is the Cardinals we're talking about, right? It's the Arizona Cardinals, yeah, correct. Yeah, so yeah. I would say that's the model of efficiency. Yeah. And also, yeah, I think that certainly helped with that after the turnover that the defense held to a field goal there, too. You know, I think that uh, you know, going and get a touchdown off of that is a different field. But uh, that was certainly uh, efficient, and Ellington had the big run. That was the perfect call. Uh, I guess the I guess the corner blitz and the safety was in the wrong position as uh, the bench from Atlanta went crazy on the sidelines after that play. So uh, they just kind of happened to call the right play, but still, I mean, he had to execute it. Right. Fitz and Floyd blocked the blitzing corner, and uh, there was nobody there. They blitz where they, they ran the play where the blitz came from. Uh, mentioned Andre Ellingson, he has a big game. I'm guessing Rashard Mendehall not the starter from here on out. I'm not sure about that. I'm not 100% sure because I don't think Ellington can be a 20 carry guy. Uh, and actually, Mendenhall has done okay in short yardage. Yeah. So he's actually been very good at the goal line. So I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't think it's going to really change a whole lot, to be honest. I, mean, I think Ellington's fate could be determined on what Taylor does. Yeah, he had some strong runs today, broke some tackles. Even though the Falcons were not tackling very well, I think they were exactly into the game. But uh, I would imagine Ben Hall's time is going to be more directed towards you know, what Taylor does as opposed to Allen. Now, before we move on from the offense, we do have to mention Larry Fitzgerald, the youngest receiver to 800 career receptions. Mentioned in the post game that he has a, a ball for his 1, 100, 200, all really? the way up to 800 now. So he's got a nice collection in his house now for that. Yeah, that's good. I did not. I missed Vince's post game, so but uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's, that's a big house he has anyway. So <laughs> he can get he can room for a few more. He found the end zone too, though. That's that's, that's true as well. Yeah, in the red zone. Yes. And uh, yeah, that was that was during that efficient second half stretch, the second quarter stretch there. We talked about. Now on the flip side, the defense uh, they very dominant from the better part of the entire game. Yeah. Uh, they, Matt Ryan was just confused and. Uh, he's lost players. I mean, yeah. two offensive linemen out, his two wide receivers are out. Steven Jackson looks like a shell of himself. So I don't think he had much of a chance. And he threw four picks. Remember last year he threw five picks against the Cardinals, and the Cardinals somehow didn't win that game. Yeah. But uh, four picks, two of them were you know, fourth and long and third and long. He just kind of eat them up there. But you know, they did a good job, and uh, he didn't have much of a chance. And uh, yeah, he's not going to have much of a chance the rest of the year, I don't think. And uh, one good other positive note is Tony Gonzalez did not go off and have a great game. Well, they did a lot of things on him. They put two guys on him a lot. Yeah, they actually split him out to the side a couple times, and they put two guys on him, very similar to what the Cardinals did last year, last year when the Lions were here, when they put two guys on Calvin Johnson a lot, even when he was split out by himself. They had two guys out there. They did that some with Gonzalez today. When he was uh, you know, inside the hash marks, they did a lot of bracket coverage stuff. So, yeah, they uh, you, know, you could do that when White and obviously Julio Jones aren't playing. So they decided uh, they were going to take him away, and they pretty much did. And then moving on to special teams, Jay Feely adds two more field goals. He hasn't missed since week one. That's true. Uh, and they had a play that I think pretty much typifies the special team so far this year. Zastadil kicked it to the one, and Bethel was running parallel to the goal line and then yes you know, they managed to keep it down at the one yard line there so uh you know is it all three all three units did a very good job uh and i guess this was kind of spurred on by the monday in pads practice uh that you know arians announced they were going to have that in pads practice the you know, friday morning after the loss here to the seattle on the thursday night game and uh you know, that got their attention apparently Absolutely. So now the Cardinals have 4-4 four four, headed into a bye week with two very, very winnable games. They'll after be favored that bye, bye week. Yeah, they'll be favored. So what? What should do with Jackson? Exactly. So what? Uh, what have we got? A lot of post-game reaction, obviously, as well as what else? 
Oh, post game reaction. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's a World Series going on. We'll cover that. There, there's a little yeah, a controversy. There's no that, controversy. With I that. agree with you, but apparently, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it was the right call. Yeah, only Red Sox fans right. think there's controversy. Exactly. There. They're still mad about 1975 <laughs> with the Ed Armbrister supposedly you know, got in the way of Carlton Fisk. So. Get over it, Red Sox fans. <laughs> Won a couple championships. But, exactly. Uh, yeah, but yeah, don't throw the ball to third base yeah. twice and lose two games. Yeah. 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 A little commentary there, folks. Uh, we'll have uh, actually two World Series segments tomorrow, uh, tomorrow to start the uh, uh, 10 o'clock hour. And then we'll have at least two segments on the game today. Paul Coro is going to come on and uh, I'll just have him explain what the Suns are doing. That's what he gets paid Rigging to do. for Wiggins, right? Yeah, Rigging just, for whatever Wiggins. Whatever you want to call it, whatever. <laughs> I just, I'm just going to ask the questions, so uh, I haven't seen the Suns practice or play for one second so far, but I'll start paying attention Wednesday. All right, for Bob Camp, I'm Rich Gray. Tune in to tomorrow's Sports Out on NBC Sports Radio 8 1060. Thank